Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Titans Season 4, Episode 9. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously this being an episode that uh, completely focuses on Gar. That was my biggest... Because once again, when Episode 7 started, I talked about this. I was like, wait, did I miss something? Worker, they said Gar saved him, but we didn't get much beyond that. They're like, yeah, we heard Gar's voice, and that was it. So I was like, oh, I guess we're just getting that story later. And it was like, okay, we are. So and we're getting that story now, understanding all that went down with Gar while he was separated from the others. He was pulled. He like he was like, bring me to the red, and he's been inside of the red. And then he, you know, at one point we see it. We we learn a little. I mean, in fact, we learn a lot about Gar's past. But obviously he gets pulled out of the red by uh, a guy named Dominic, but he's Freedom Beast. Um, and it's like, hey, I brought you here because... Because he was like, at first I was like, oh, you're in some different world? It's like, no, it seems like it's just... I mean, it seems like it's just their world because he's like, oh, we're at the top of like Kilimanjaro or something like that. And there's also like a lion bat. And you're like, wait, what? That's why I was like, is this some kind of like fantasy world or something? Like, I mean, it, it might have been like a little bit of a pocket dimension of sorts. It's just encapsulated there. But basically, the red, interestingly enough, kind of connects everything. All life, all animal life across the multiverse. It's like, so I was like, oh, so like the red's kind of like, I guess almost like the speed force where it's like this conscience entity that just kind of exists all over the place so i thought that was really interesting so kind of having a better understanding of the red and who uh freedom beast is he's someone that's just like gar his family died because of he has a different name for it but basically it's the green plague he's also someone that survived and i even love gar being like but why is it when i turn into animals i turn into green stuff it's like oh that's psychologically speaking it's because green is your favorite color so you you kind of you transfer that over to some extent it's like yeah it's been his favorite color ever since he was a kid so it, i guess i guess you can almost make some argument that it's a, almost like every time Gar transforms. It's like he's keeping a piece of himself, of who he is there. So he's almost like he, you know, because that was always his thing before. He would always kind of lose himself into the animals he would turn into because he couldn't control it. He's got way more control over it now. So, but it's still that subconscious thing of green because it's still me, you know? Obviously, that's the justification for it in the show. Like, obviously, he's a green animal because he's green in the, the comics and most iterations, you know? Um, uh, because obviously, like, in Young Justice, he got his powers very differently than he canonically usually gets them. I don't know if the way he got them is, like, the Green Plague and stuff. If that's how he typically gets them in the comics. But I know in Young Justice, it's because McGon uh, gave him a blood transfer. And, you know, Martians... Uh, have the power to shape shift, so that's where Gar got his powers from. Either way, tensions and all that aside, it's just kind of interesting. Um, but we find out that Freedom Beast is the guardian of the red, and it, he's got this pro like it, it, the mantle was passed on to him from some guy named Mike, and um. It's something that's always been passed down. It gives him like the strength of like animals and stuff, and it gives him a prolonged life. So he's been doing this thing as the guardian of the red for decades. And uh, I thought it was so interesting when they kind of uh, dived into it when he talked about the fact is that um, when he talks about how. Gar is different from everyone else. There are many other champions. He references Animal Man. Animal Man. I know the name. I don't know if I know the character. But then he also drops Vixen's name. I was like, interesting. It's so funny because I guess like maybe in the comics, I don't know if that's a squad or not, or whether they're but they're in that same lane. Because I don't I don't know if it's like this is like the end. This is like the Beast Kingdom squad. You know, like how like the Bat Family is the Bat Family, right? So I'm wondering, or, or like the Soup Family is the Soup Family. I'm wondering is is Gar part of some, like, Beast Kingdom squad in, like... Yeah, because it's, like, I never would have correlated that, because, of course, you have characters, like, obviously, we see it with uh, Freedom Beast, but you also throw in someone like Vixen and an Animal Man. It makes sense, like, their powers are, like, tied to animals and stuff. Vixen's powers, she literally draws upon the, the power of different animals. Gar can literally turn into different animals, and that's what makes him a little different. is isn't just, like, you don't just borrow the strength and call upon the strength of animals, you become them. So it makes you very different from, like, any other person. It makes you very unique, and I 
I thought was so interesting because that uniqueness also makes you very lonely because it is a power like no, like people have similar things. Yes, there's people out there in the world that have very unique powers and stuff like that, but your powers in particular are very unique. I, we also I can't also forget about the fact is that and it, they implement it in this episode, but Freedom Beast can also morph. He could also fuse two animals together, hence why lion bats a thing, because he did that himself, which I love Gar being like, oh, the weirdest power ever. Or like, I love hearing that come from you, mister, I could shapeshift into animals. You know, but to be fair, it's like, I guess like shapeshifting in animals, it's, 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 it's normal stuff, like being able to fuse two animals, I guess that's some other... I guess I guess I guess that's supposed to be the point too. Once again, like you are, you kind of got a weird power, and so for you to call someone else's power weird. But yeah, it's like there's a loneliness with like being having a very unique ability that you have, especially amongst other people. At least that I'm aware of. That the name drops that they had this episode of people. Once again, because I like I know the name Animal Man, but I don't know if I know know the character at all. Um... Because he, because uh, the red, because it connects everything, it also connects memory, and so you could use the red to travel memory. And I thought it was so interesting. Gar was like, "Wait, so when does it kick in?" And then there's like all those versions of him. Because I guess it's supposed to be like him kind of falling out of time, and like these are different versions of him across. I'm being like, "Oh, when is it kicking in? When does it? When it kick? When does it begin? Like when does it start like kicking in?" And he ends up being on the bus with. Uh, Rachel and himself, and it's like, oh, you've always followed somebody, whether it's Niles, whether it's Dick, like, this time you're in the driver's seat, it's up to you to kind of follow your own path, and don't just, like, follow others, become your, you know, he's always been the follower, it's time for you to kind of take charge and lead, he ends up running into Jinx, because I talked about this in episode 7, because I went back and rewatched that last bit of episode 6, just remember where things exactly ended, because I actually forgot that Jinx had died, because, once again, I was confused. I was like, wait, we're not touching on the Gar stuff at all? Wait, did I skip something last episode? Like, in episode six, and I just didn't realize it? Went back and was like, no, I guess we're just not going to cover it, right? I brought it up earlier. But I but I brought this up in episode seven when I heard Jinx's line of, like, not again. I was like, oh, so she's died before, and she kind of talks about it here. She's like, this isn't my first funeral, nor is it my first eve of resurrection. So I'm like, oh, I guess this is just kind of like... Like, part of her magic thing is just kind of like, yeah, I can die and I come back. It just takes a while. She's like, they kind of know. I guess you kind of have to piece together. Like, once you're kind of lost in, like, death, you kind of probably have to go and kind of collect yourself a little bit. So, but she kind of talks about the conversation of this isn't, you know, life isn't just about. I love that was that thing of, like, oh, so, what was, he was like, wait, what? And she's like, it's a long story, someone else is writing. I was like, I love that. I love that line of dialogue. I love that. It's almost just, it's a very meta line of dialogue. It's like, we don't have time to get into that. Someone else is writing this, so we got to move along. At least that's how I'm interpreting that. But either way, uh, but she said this really uh, interesting thing where basically like, life isn't just about the individual, that life is basically about like all people, you know, and saying like what's coming and w what's going on. It's, it's bigger than just you. It's bigger than just the Titan. There's so much, it's so much bigger. Life moves backwards and forwards and then obviously gets drawn back in by the uh, Freedom Beast who shows like, I guess these are the lineages of people. Uh, the different champions. The red has its, you know, its champions, its guardians. And uh, we see, like, I guess maybe all the previous people who've ever taken up the mantle of Freedom Beast, maybe. Uh, maybe this is presumptuous on my side. He said, like, a guy named Mike gave him the helmet. I'm like, is that the white guy that's standing there? <laughs> you know, once again, very presumptuous of me, but I was, like, wondering if that was the case. But it's like, oh, yeah, let's go, like, deal with this situation. Because, um... There's a guy named Dr. Miles who is experimenting on animals. Like, he's keeping one particular animal alive. Even saying, like, oh, tape its mouth shut so we don't have to hear it. I was like, Jesus. And it's like, right, let's let's go. Like, can you hear them? Because he's like, because of the helmet, um, um, Dominic Freedom Beast is able to hear the animal's cries. And Gar can hear it, too. So it's like, yeah, let's go set them free. Go in there, they bust the place up, stop everybody, and they get to Dr. Miles and the, the eight, uh, the chimp that's on the, um, table. She's been cut open, and they can't take her because she's been 
like given like an anthrax virus or something because they're testing stuff out. And it's like if you take her out of here, she'll be super contagious. It will like be very deadly to any and everything that touches. So it's like they can't leave her here. They can't take her. And so um, it's like, right, she will die here. But Dr. Miles, so will you. So he ends up fusing the two of them together. It's like, right. And this way you get to suffer when you die. You get to feel her pain. And maybe in some way it ends up taking away her pain a little bit at the same time, you know. He came there to save his friend to free her. It's like, I guess all the animals are in that same situation because I, well, maybe, I, I think it was specifically that one, but like any, because they had killed and hurt like every other, no, because I, uh, the way, um, because Gar was like, wait, they're all dead. Like, she was the only one at that facility that was still alive. And it's like, oh, he wasn't the one behind all this. There was someone else above him. I was like, my immediate brain was like, Lex? I was like, is this going to be a Lex core thing? Turns out it's not. It's a Niles thing. I was like, oh, interesting. And so we go into the whole, oh, Niles is an asshole on every Earth, apparently. I mean, at least out of two in the multiverse, he's an asshole. Uh, because it's like, wait, Niles is behind this? It's like, oh, not only was he behind this, the green play, that wasn't just some, like, fainted. It was manufactured by him. And Gar's almost like, wait, what? The guy who saved my life is also... It's like, yeah, he's the one that killed my family because, uh, Beastmaster... Uh, I was gonna call him Beastmaster, jeez. Freedom Beast, uh, lost his sister and her children. And Gar lost his mom and dad. And so many others died because of Niles. Because Niles was trying to find... Uh, immortality, so you're like, interesting, so, so, obviously, what he did to the Doom Patrol, I mean, he was on, like, I mean, let's not forget in the Doom Patrol episode, he was on some, like, BS den, too, like, he was, what he was trying to do to Raven, and stuff, and telling Gar not to interfere, like, we already know he was on, but it's like, he was already in his mad scientist bag, but it's like, so his motivations are the same. We don't know if the exact same reason is applicable. We know in the Doom Patrol show, once again, also got to remember, those take place on two different continuities. Uh, so the so on the Doom Patrol show, which is on Earth like 20, I can never remember. It's like 20, it's like 25, 26, or 27. We only, we only know that because of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Because we know Titans takes place on Earth 9, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, either way, uh... On that Earth, Niles did it for his daughter, Dorothy. So we don't know if that's the same motivation for Earth 9's Niles Colder. But it's still the thing of they want immortality, they just went about it. But we don't know if the reasoning behind it's the same. But it's like, well, how would constructing a virus like lead to ever like lead to that? It's like, well, because he needed someone to survive it. All he needed was one person to survive. So I guess he figured like, hey, if I if someone if I engineer this and someone survived it, maybe that I could take the something in Gar's DNA, who ended up being the survivor, and apply it to myself, meaning I can kind of survive anything. Which is I once again, no despite his motive, at least the Doom Patrol Niles Colder, like we know it's about his daughter, so there is some sweet reason why he does it. Does not, once again, doesn't take away from him being a complete another asshole who destroyed so many lives. And we see that it isn't just on one earth, you destroyed lives on another earth, you know, for your own selfish reasons. So it does, it's un, like, hey, it says you can understand why you do it, does not make it right that you did what you did. You're still crappy for it. And so it is a thing of, all right, right. So I even love that line where he was like, uh, Freedom Beast said, that's the problem with people. They're never quite who you think they are. At worst, they're like Niles Calder who destroy. At best, they're like the Titans and are nothing more than a distraction. But you could tell that, like, bothered Gar hearing that. It's like, no, they're not. And he's like, you know what? I'm leaving. Because he's like, hey, I finally found you after all this time. I've been looking for you. I've been waiting for you. It's time for me to pass on the, the role of Guardian of the Red to you. Uh, almost like I can finally rest. So it's not like you have your altruistic reasons. You're kind of tired from doing it for so long. But Or maybe it's more so like you are like the ultimate of ultimate champions. You know, eventually you'll pass the mantle on. But you're a very special case in so many regards, Gar. So it's time for you to take this mantle. But for him, it's like, no, there's too much at stake. The Titans, I need to get back my friends, my family. They need me. Plus everything that's going on in the world, they need me. You know, but... Uh, because the uh, Freedom Beast was saying that basically he lived a life of solitude. He's like, yes, it sucks. He's like, I get it. 
but it's a necessary thing. You have to cut away all the people. You can't have any of that when you want to be the when you're being the guardian of the red. And for him, for guards, I, I get it. I was chosen. This is what I'm meant to do. I'll do it. But I'm not going to abandon the people I love most. So I'm going back to him. It's like, you're not ready to travel through the red. He's like, for the first time in my life, I know I am ready. And he ends up doing it. Um, first and foremost, he had that intimate moment with himself as a kid when he was, you know, young. He was lost at the zoo. I mean, I don't know if that was like just him being lost. Maybe that was sometime after his family died, but he was scared and he was alone. I think that person uh, from the, I guess it was a thing of, hey, let you stay here. I mean, symbolically, like, I, I guess like for her, it's like, I want you to stay here so I can like, you know, in case your parents come looking for you during all this, they'll know where to find you. But I think the best thing would have been to hey, take you with her. But it's like, you know, it, it, it's supposed to fit the motif of just him feeling kind of alone, but him telling himself, it's like, no, it's going to be okay. You're not alone. You're going to find people who care about you and everything's going to be okay. Get zapped through the multiverse, which, spoilers, I already knew about. I mean, it's not even, but I kind of sadly got spoiled on it. I didn't watch this scene, but the scene is floating out there about, like, the multiverse scene at the very end. All I saw was the still of it, and someone had titled, like, oh, Gar sees the multiverse, and list some of the things he saw. So it's like, oh, so I knew he was going to see some Arrowverse stuff. So he sees Barry running, Grant Gustin's Barry, get zapped. Then he ends up somewhere. I was like, where the hell did he land now? And then I saw the boots. I was like, I saw the shoes. I was like, no way. No way. And they pinned up. I was like, no way. I was like, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, Breck back as Stargirl at least one more time. I was like, that's so awesome. That's an amazing cameo, dude. I'm so excited by that. That's amazing. And he actually interacted with her, too. I was like, dude, this is amazing. And even that line of him being like, I'm trying to find my family. She's like, no, I get it. I, I know how important family mean, can mean. And he's like, I, th I I sense that you do. It's like, she really does. I was like, oh, that's amazing. That I can only assume this is sometime after season three. It's like, oh, dude. Her popping up as Stargirl one more time, one last time, that's, that's so awesome, dude. That's so awesome she got to, like, I don't know, I don't know when they were able, when they filmed this, I don't know, it was like after season three was filmed and she was able to kind of just film this for Titans, or was it like even after the cancellation of Stargirl, she got the, I want, I want to at least believe she got to wear the suit one more time, like post, like, Stargirl getting canceled in this, um, Either way, oh, dude, that's, that was just so awesome. And she's willing, like, she's trying to help him and everything. I, he doesn't realize, like, obviously he's on a different Earth. Because we know Stargirl, at least based on Crisis, is on Earth 2. So it's like, okay, you accidentally uh, went a few world uh, Earths the uh, wrong direction. So It's also, like, really befitting, too. Because don't forget that Stargirl started on DC Universe along with Titans. Um... Because, I mean, obviously its first season simultaneously aired on the CW and uh, DC Universe before season two on being exclusively on the CW. But it still feels very befitting. Because Stargirl was the, was it the last one on DC Universe? I know it was like the last of the original stuff because I know like, well, because I know Titans came back for a season two that also aired on DC Universe. And so did Doom Patrol. Both of their season twos aired on season two of titans i think exclusively aired on dc universe i think i know doom patrol season two aired on um oh god on uh hbo max at the same time but either way it just it felt so befitting then he's kind of like popping that through and he sees like zachary levi's uh shazam then we see like him uh to a animated Beast Boy from Teen Titans go, Waffles, Waffle, Waffles. I was like, dude. I was like, this is wild. And we're hearing some voiceover stuff. Sounded like some Joker laughing. Sounded like some Mark Hamill Joker. And I'm like, I don't know which Joker that is. I don't know if it's like Batman the Animated Series. But they're definitely, because of the Beast Boy, they are pulling from some animated stuff. I was like, dude. Really quickly, I want to go back and correct myself. I don't, I'm just going to slap this in here somewhere. Watching this scene again, it was, I forgot to talk about the fact that they showed Swamp Thing and listening to some of that stuff. I thought I heard Harley. It is Harley. It sounds like it's Kaylee Kuoko, so it sounds like it's the Harley Quinn. So I'm like, oh, so it isn't just Star Girl. And obviously, it's like, dude, it's like all the DC Universe properties. 
that were, it's it felt like it's like oh with Titans ending because this was the first show out the the gate so it, it's it's all kind of like coming full circle so it wasn't just the Star Girl so like I forgot about the Swamp Thing and listening to it now like I said it sounded like that was Harley Quinn like I said specifically uh, Kaylee's um, Harley from. Um, from uh oh god uh from the harley quinn show probably with that that joker was hearing too i don't know if that was mark hamill's that might have just been alan tudyk's joker because obviously he has his connection to all of this too because he was mr nobody also in um doom patrol so and then there was one guy who was like i can see you can you see me i was like i was like who who the hell is that based on the name at the end i was like wait that was grant morrison I've never actually seen what he looks like before. It's a name I know, but I've never actually seen what he looks like. Because I was so confused. I was like, who is that supposed to be? That's awesome. At first, I was I wonder, has he worked on... I, I, well, because obviously he's written a lot of different comic books. Um, the comic book Happy, I know, is one of his. Um, I guess, I mean, he's... I don't know. I'm sure he's probably done... I don't, Maybe he's done stuff with Marvel. I mean, there's so many writers that have definitely done stuff with, like, Marvel and DC, you know? So, I don't know if he's... I'd, I'd assume because he made an appearance, too. Maybe he's written, like, some Beast Boy books. Let me look that up. So, looking it up, he exclusively has written for DC. I don't know if there's been any Marvel stuff. No, there's been some Marvel stuff, because I see, like, new X-Men on kind of, like, some of the stuff he's worked on. But he's worked on Doom Patrol, Animal Man, just to kind of name, like, some of the few. Obviously, you're curious about it, like, there's a long list. I'd actually completely forgotten the Batman, uh, Brave and the Bold is specifically his book, the one they're adapting for a movie. Um, with Damien, like I think he, I think he even is, he's credited as one of the people who co create yeah, he also co-created Damien Wayne. So... So it's like, okay, so interesting. Um, but with the Doom Patrol and the, like, Animal Man, like, it, it makes perfect sense and stuff like that. But yeah, um, he's, once again, still trying to find his way home, and he lands somewhere. I'm like, that doesn't look, that looks like that might be Doom Manor. And lo and behold, who shows up? Jovian Wade as Cyborg. I was like, yo! But I'm like, wait a minute. What does this mean? Because first and foremost, I'm like, wait, is this tying into Doom Patrol's final episode? So is this like later on in, like maybe like Doom Patrol's already ended, but this is like post Doom Patrol's ending type of situation, very much like Stargirl's situation? Or is that supposed to be the Doom Patrol from, hit the Doom Patrol he knows that like after he left, uh, Cyborg also ended up joining that, which is also interesting too, obviously because Cyborg has his connection to the Teen Titans and stuff like that, the, the Titans. So it's just... Oh, dude, I, I don't know how to interpret that ending. Because where we are with Doom Patrol, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a while, he still wasn't back to being Cyborg. He was still Vic. So I don't know if he's... Like, that's why I'm like, I don't know if this is supposed to be the future of that continuity and this uh, Beast Boy thing is going to tie into the ending of Doom Patrol in some regards. Or is it just mean like, no, this is... He's back on his Earth. He's just with his Doom Patrol at Doom Manor. So... I hope so, so we could get more appearances from the others, but that might be all we're getting. It's just like a, oh yeah, like, that's that's done with, and next time we see Gar, he's back with the Titans without some of the Doom Patrol stuff mixing it. I, I don't know. Either way, uh, dude, this was a hell of an episode. Um, I thought it was a nice and awesome and powerful journey for Gar to go on, especially they've been setting this up all season. Like, what's this red stuff? What's this visions? that Gar has, and, you know, it's like, once you're fully tapped into the red, it'll give you t great strength, so I'm sure in this upcoming battle against Brother Blood and potentially Trigon, because I'm sure he's going to return and be the big, big bad, so you're going to need that, plus, I mean, we know, supposedly, Corey's supposed to sacrifice herself, so maybe with Gar there, things don't have to be that way, so we'll ultimately have to wait to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.